Welcome to the house of the Lord, and welcome to St. Mark Lutheran Church in Leesburg, Florida. I'm Pastor David Rose now, and I thank God for this privilege to be fed and strengthened by the Word of God together with you. This weekend is celebrating the fourth Sunday in end times, traditionally Christ the King Sunday, because the Lord has so graciously blessed our attendance, and I thank God that He does. It's not going to be... a very easy for us to accommodate safe social distancing and have enough services to do that this week for Thanksgiving. So this service is also going to be our Thanksgiving worship. What a message the Lord has, what a reminder He has, and what strength He gives through this word. God bless our time in and through His word. Let's begin in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please follow along as I'll offer the prayer of the day. Lord Jesus Christ, by your victory, you have broken the power of the evil one. Fill our hearts with joy and peace as we look with hope to that day when every creature in heaven and earth will acclaim you King of Kings and Lord of lords, to your unending praise and glory. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The word of God that is the foundation of our message is recorded in Philippians chapter 4, just verses 10 through 13. The apostle Paul wrote, I rejoice greatly in the Lord, that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. The word of our Lord. I'll offer a short prayer. Lord, open now my heart to hear, and through your word to me draw near. Let me your word ere pure retain, let me your child and heir remain. Amen. Can you remember receiving a special thank you, one that stood out from the rest? Maybe it was because of the sincerity of their gratitude that they expressed. Maybe it was a thank you where their joy brought you so much joy that it seemed like your joy was more than they had from receiving the gift you gave them. The letter to the Philippians is a special thank you like that. The Apostle Paul wrote this letter to the Christians in the congregation at Philippi to say thank you for a generous gift that they had sent him. But his thank you proved to be as valuable and more than the gift they sent. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, 
the Apostle Paul changed a, shared a life-changing secret with them and with us. The secret of being content in any and every situation. Considering all that's going on in the world today, I can't think of a better time for the Lord to remind us of how we can be content no matter what's happening in our lives. A form of the word joy appears 16 times in this short letter. This is a joy-filled letter. Paul is a pastor who's thinking back to one of his favorite congregations and his heart smiles. Thinking back to this particular congregation brought back great memories of the good things the Word of God had accomplished in their lives and in the bright ways that it showed. They showed their love for the Lord and their gratitude for the gospel message that Paul had shared with them by sharing gifts of support with Paul. At the beginning of this letter, Paul wrote, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. The believers who sent Paul the gift of financial support wanted to do all they could to keep Paul going so that he could share another passionate sermon and some more powerful Bible studies with more people, with another congregation, and one more, and one more, and one more, and change their lives too. No amount could be thanks enough for any of us to learn about the new life we have in Christ to learn about the new life that Christ has won for us and the peace and the hope and the joy that we have because of it. And the timing of their gift could not have been better. Do you know where Paul was when he received their gift and what he was doing? Paul was in prison in Rome, not because he had done anything wrong, but because he was preaching the gospel to people who didn't want to hear it. The financial gift that they sent Paul was a great blessing, but the expression of their love for their dear pastor was worth just as much. And Paul wanted to say thank you for both. Because after Paul had been through, he had learned some important things about having stuff and not having stuff. Paul wrote, I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. What was his secret? Paul didn't wake up one morning and realize that he was content. Paul didn't decide, today is the day that I am going to be content. No, it was the Lord who taught Paul to be content through a lifetime of trials and hardships and the Lord's faithfulness through it all. In another one of his letters, Paul shared some of what he had been through. Paul said, I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. That is so much for one person to go through. Yet there's more. Paul adds, I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my own countrymen, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false brothers. I have labored and toiled and gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else I face daily, the pressure of my concern for all the churches. 
What would have happened if Paul based his contentment on how things were going in his life? He never would have been content. Paul had a lot of bad days with a lot of bad in them. His body was covered in scars on the outside and filled with pain on the inside. Something hurt all the time. Paul worked and worked and worked. He didn't get enough sleep. And on top of all those things, he always carried the cares and concerns of the people in the churches on his heart and mind, and that weighed heavy on him. God taught Paul through all that he allowed to happen in his life that he did not have the strength to deal with everything on his own. Not the physical strength, not the emotional strength, and not the mental strength. And though we can have our moments of strong days, we must not think that we can either. Paul patiently persevered, sometimes one hour at a time to get through each day, to get through all things, the good and the bad, only because he relied on a strength that was entirely outside of anything to do with him or the people around him. Paul lived in the power and in the promises and in the love and in the strength of Christ. That's the secret. Our perspectives on our lives and on everything that happens changes when we remember that we do too. The secret to being content in any and all situation is to remember that we are in Christ. This is the secret of being thankful. On days we might need a little help remembering why we can be and why we are. Everything in life changes. Our house, our home, our health, our finances, our families, our friends. But we live in the strength of Christ who does not change. In Christ, we may be content because in Christ we have a new peace, even when things are a mess. In Christ, we may be content when our hearts are sad because in Christ, he becomes our joy. In Christ, we can be content when our minds are full of cares and concerns because in Christ, we have a new kind of hope. In Christ, we may be content when we feel overwhelmed because in Christ we have a new kind of peace for every day in this life and a peace that is beyond our understanding when we get to heaven. 2020 has shown us that we have no idea what to expect tomorrow or next week or next month. We don't know if God has in mind to grant us a next year or what kind of year it's going to be if he does. But we know what we need to know, and we know what matters, because we know that this life does not go on forever. The next one will. And by God's amazing grace, we know that in Christ, though our sins are like scarlet and should have separated us from that life with God in heaven, he has washed us whiter than wool and assured us that one day we will be with him in heaven. Though my soul may be troubled at times by some things I wish I could change now or some people I wish would change or by some things I wish I could go back in time and do much differently, in Christ I have peace with God through the full and free forgiveness of all my sins. Though I might not understand or know what God is doing day by day or why God is doing it, in Christ I have his unchanging promise that in everything he allows to happen, he is at work to guide all things for my ultimate good. Sometimes we don't see the love and the wisdom of our God until a little time has passed. And sometimes we might not ever know why this or why that in this lifetime? But like Paul, we do know 
that he will be our strength for each new day, as many as he knows is best to give us. And if it's at all important to know why he did things the way he did, he'll tell us when we get to heaven. Until then, give him your fears. Lighten your load. Give him your frustrations about everything and about everyone. Give him your doubts. Give him your worries. Give him your cares and concerns. Give him your sorrows. Give him your weakness. And let Christ give you his strength. God's love for you, God's plans for you, God's ways are perfect. He's always working to lift our eyes away from ourselves, away from our abilities, away from our plans, and away from our solutions so that he can point our hearts and our hopes toward our help and our home in heaven, in Christ and with Christ. And in him, we may be content. Over the next few days, Thanksgiving will look a little different for a lot of people. That's okay, because we have the secret of being content, whether in a kitchen filled with family or at a table set for one. The only way anyone can be thankful for anything is if we are first content in everything. And the only way we can truly be content is if we are in Christ. Dear Christian, by God's grace and the gift of faith he has given you, you are in Christ. You are in his strength. You are in his power. You are in his promises. You are in his love. In Christ you may be content. And content in Christ, each new day is a magnificent thanksgiving. Amen. I invite you to follow along with me as I'll offer a special prayer for this day. And then I'll invite you to join with me and we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. Almighty God, we acknowledge with thanks that all we have and enjoy is a gift from your gracious hand. We come before you today in heartfelt appreciation for the many blessings you have poured upon us and our nation and its people. We pray especially for those who are not able to join family and friends this Thanksgiving. Let them find joy in your presence and wrap them in your arms of love. We pray for those who are sick and suffering on this day and for those who may close their eyes in death. Keep watch over their beds and show them the light of your grace. We pray for those who serve in our military forces, for those who've been wounded in battle, and for the families of those who have given their lives in service to our nation. Show them the face of your son that they may come to see him as their king and savior. Help us to receive all your blessings with thankful and humble hearts. We do not deserve your physical blessings any more than we merit the gift of your salvation. Destroy our sinful pride. Protect us from Satan's temptations and grow in us a true spirit of love and service. For these things and so much more, we pray the prayer Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear Christian, receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. I thank the Lord that you were willing to commit your time to spend here in God's word with me. What a marvelous message for this time, really any day, but especially on days when a lot of people might be thinking about family that they can't get together with because of the virus situation or because they've already gone ahead of them into heaven. Maybe that's your situation too. And I pray that however it is that you might be celebrating this week, even if it is that you are alone or not gathering with the people that you had hoped to, that you will know you have the most magnificent Thanksgiving each new day because we now know the secret of being content and it's to be in Christ and in all the blessings that come from being in Christ. Remember that you are never alone. You can't be because Christ is with you. Please, if you know somebody that would benefit from hearing this good news, will you please share this with them? Invite them to become a subscriber on the YouTube channel. The only thing that happens by doing that is that they'll be first to receive it when the video is published. God bless you. God bless your day. God bless your week. Lord willing, I'll see you real soon.